Hello and welcome back to another episode of What If on HITC Football, where we look at how the footballing world could have changed if some key moments had gone differently. Today, we're going to look at what is personally one of my favourite goals of all time, as we explore what if David Beckham missed his halfway line shot against Wimbledon back in 1996. We're sure you've all seen this goal. On the opening day of the 1996-97 season, a 21-year-old David Beckham scored one of the most remarkable goals of the Premier League era, lobbing Neil Sullivan in the Wimbledon goal from just behind the halfway line. This goal immediately propelled Beckham from being an intriguing prospect to a bona fide superstar. Within two weeks he was making his England debut and from there he never looked back, becoming one of the greatest players of the Premier League era and one of the most famous sportsmen of all time. But does any of that happen to Beckham if he missed that shot? Yes, this is just one goal in what was an incredible career, but this strike was the launching pad that made Beckham the player and the celebrity that we know today, making news on both the front page and the back page at the time. So. What if Beckham didn't score that goal against Wimbledon? It's often forgotten that Beckham had actually tried such an effort just minutes before he scored that iconic goal, and it's fair to say that Alex Ferguson wasn't too happy with that kind of showboating. In fact, Fergie has since admitted that if Beckham had tried such a shot again, he would have substituted him immediately. Ferguson said, How can you forget that 60-yard goal? He tried about 10 minutes before he scored, and I said to my assistant Brian Kidd, If he tries that again, he's off. Of course, Beckham did have the cheek to try it again, and it came off leaving Ferguson awestruck rather than furious. But if he had missed, Bex would have been in for a serious helping of the hairdryer treatment. In the reality where Beckham misses, on the opening day of the 1996-97 season, rather than being crowned as world football's newest superstar, David Beckham is subbed off in rather unsavoury circumstances and labelled as a selfish show-off rather than a team player. And missing that situation would not only have had ramifications on Beckham's career, but it would also have affected the Manchester United team at that point. Let's not forget, this was the same team that sparked the famous you'll never win anything with kids quote from Alan Hansen. But after Beckham announced himself with this halfway line goal, Fergie knew that this team was in safe hands with these young players. However, let's say that Beckham is subbed after missing two halfway line shots in the same game, which, in all honesty, is quite an immature thing for a footballer to even try. Ferguson might just have had some hesitancy around giving these young players a key role. After all, his golden boy has just embarrassed himself and his manager on the first day of a new season, in what was meant to be a bright new era for Manchester United. So instead of giving prominent roles to the likes of Beckham, Paul Scholes, Gary Neville and Nicky Butt that season, Ferguson opts to stick with the more tried and tested players within the squad, and we even think that one of the class of 92 could have been sold if this was the attitude at the time, instead of trusting the academy graduates. If one of the class of 92 is to be sold, the prime candidate for a sale at that point would probably have been Paul Scholes. Scholes hadn't quite earned his stripes at United at that point, and in fact, that summer Blackburn Rovers did want him in a part exchange deal for Alan Shearer. And while that Shearer move probably wouldn't have come to fruition due to Shearer's ambitions of playing for Newcastle, Scholes could well have ended up at Ewood Park as there was a clear interest and he hadn't quite made his mark at Old Trafford yet. After all, he did only become a true midfield player in the autumn of 1997 after Roy Keane's knee injury. As for that United team, with Fergie more hesitant to take the handbrake off and unleash the class of 92 to their full potential after Beckham's miss, we're not expecting them to win the league title that season. Newcastle were Manchester United's biggest rivals at this point and they finished second that year, but we don't think they'd have won the title either. This isn't often mentioned, but Newcastle actually finished that campaign on 68 points, level with both Liverpool and Arsenal. So if United were out of the equation, this would have been a really fierce freeway battle for the title. Liverpool, Arsenal and Newcastle would have all been contenders for the title in this reality. But if Beckham isn't trusted to be a regular starter for United at this point, he may never have scored what was a truly brilliant goal against Liverpool in the October of 1996. In turn, giving the Merseyside club the extra point they would have needed to best Newcastle and Arsenal in that three-way tie. You could also make the case that Arsenal or even Newcastle could have picked up more points against United without the class of 92 playing a key role at season, but Beckham's goal was the only direct impact that this crop of players had on the results of any of these fixtures that term, so for argument's sake, we're saying that Liverpool win that title that year, which could consequently change the course of their history, as the albatross of their lengthy title drought wouldn't have been around their neck throughout the 2000s, but maybe that's a video for another day. So Liverpool win their first Premier League title in 1997, but we don't think they'll go on to be as dominant as United were around this time. The Red Devils' star players would have got their chances eventually, but we think that a lack of experience together at this point may well have led to them failing to win a treble in 1999. Meanwhile, on the international scene, if Beckham isn't given Ferguson's seal of approval in 1996, there's reason to believe that he wouldn't play such a key role for England at the 1998 World Cup. Beckham made headlines at that World Cup being red-carded in a round of 16 game against Argentina, but if he's not a starter at that point, 
that red card never happens. Beckham's place on the right side of that midfield would potentially have actually been taken by a Liverpool player in the shape of Steve McManaman. After Liverpool won their Premier League title in this reality, Glenn Hoddle would have been very tempted to pick McManaman over Beckham, and if he's on the pitch rather than Beck's, that red card doesn't happen. And if England can keep 11 men on the pitch against Argentina, perhaps they progress into the quarterfinals. Sadly though, that's where the World Cup party ends for Glenn Hoddle's side. The Dutch team that awaited England in the quarterfinals was packed to the brim with quality, with the likes of Dennis Bergkamp, Clarence Seedorf, Mark Overmars and the De Boer brothers carrying the Netherlands to a semi-final finish eventually. Meanwhile, England were relying on the likes of Darren Anderton and David Batty at that tournament, so they weren't exactly world champions elect. At least the quarterfinals finish is more dignified than a second round exit on penalties. Of course, we couldn't do a video about David Beckham without talking about his life beyond football. When you're talking about Beckham, you're talking about a lot more than just a footballer. He was the first real celebrity Premier League star. He was a model, a fashion icon and the husband of one of the world's biggest pop stars. However, if this goal against Wimbledon doesn't propel him to that superstardom, that potentially all changes. Without that level of media attention after this goal, he doesn't go on to become the A-lister that we all know today, and he probably doesn't go on to meet and eventually marry Victoria Beckham. Posh Spice not getting with Bex potentially leads to the Spice Girls staying together, which, depending on who you ask, is the single worst knock-on effect of this miss against Wimbledon. So Beckham doesn't get propelled into worldwide popularity by this goal, but the Premier League was more than ready for a poster boy at that point. So who takes up that mantle? Well actually, most people forget that David Batty scored a very similar goal just one week later against the same opposition. Batty lobbed Wimbledon's Neil Sullivan from the halfway line just one week after Beckham did, so perhaps he'd have been the Premier League's big superstar at that point. But with all due respect to Batty, a 5 foot 8 Yorkshireman who only ever scored 9 goals in his life, he was never going to be the face of the biggest brand this sport has ever seen. For our money, the most likely candidate to take Beckham's place would have come from that Liverpool team that won the title in our reality. That group of players were known the Spice Boys and with a bit more success behind them, they could have been Beckham level celebrities. Robbie Fowler, Steve McManaman and David James were all contenders. Robbie Fowler even tried to copy David Beckham by dating a Spice Girl in the shape of Emma Bunton and despite what he shows us on BT Sport most weeks, Steve McManaman does have a good personality while David James was actually the face of Armani at one point in the mid 90s. However, we think the number one contender above all of those players would have been Jamie Redknapp and he would have been earmarked for the Beckham superstar push in the media around this point. Redknapp certainly had the style and the status for this role. He would eventually marry a pop star and while he's not on Beckham's level in terms of celebrity, he's still a real figure in the media, appearing on Sky Sports and a league of their own regularly. Redknapp certainly had the personality to be this kind of celebrity and if this Liverpool team were more successful during this era, the media wouldn't have been able to get enough of Redknapp. Saying that though, we can't imagine that Redknapp would have been quite the same level as national treasure that Beckham has turned out to be. Everything Golden Balls has touched has turned to, well, gold, but Redknapp or any other poster boy, they wouldn't quite have had that same level of success. After all, there is only one David Beckham. For all of his extracurricular activities, most of the time, Beckham actually let his talent do the talking, but no player had, or perhaps ever will have, that perfect blend of personality, style, notoriety and genuine world-class footballing ability. Redknapp had the personality and the style, but we don't know if he'd have handled the media as well as Beckham did, and in terms of talent, there's no real comparison between Beckham and Redknapp. Just look at the number of England caps the pair got. It really is impossible to underestimate just how popular Beckham was in the 90s and the 2000s. He was in films, he had multiple video games named after him, and he was the face of the London 2012 Olympic bid. And with all due respect to Jamie Redknapp, we can't imagine the UK winning the right to host the games in 2012 if he was fronting the campaign instead of Bex. So there you have it. If Beckham misses that shot from the halfway line against Wimbledon, he's immediately substituted, affecting Alex Ferguson's ability to trust his young players. In turn, Paul Scholes heads to Blackburn Rovers, extending their spell as one of the Premier League's elite clubs, while Liverpool win the title as United drop off, with Beckham never scoring that crucial goal in October 1996. Meanwhile, off the back of Liverpool's title win, Jamie Redknapp becomes a Beckham-level household name, albeit to a lesser extent, costing London the chance to host the 2012 Olympic Games. This What If was a bit more of a fun one, so we want to know your theories around who Manchester United would have signed in the late 90s if they weren't going to trust the class of 1992 so much. One name that immediately came to mind for us was Pavel Nedved. He would have been a very decent alternative to Beckham. As always, let us know your theories in the comments below, tell us which what if you want us to look at next, like and subscribe for more football content, and I'll see you next time.